The pipe server enterprise system includes a kiosk that resides at the Watts machine. This kiosk communicates with the machine and shows the user what is running on the machine. Your pipe designs and pipe inventory data are all kept on a SQL server. This server comes pre-installed at the kiosk, but the data can be moved to a different SQL server as determined by your company. Because the system is SQL based, it's easy for users to access the database from anywhere within the company network using the same application as the kiosk. The system starts with part designs. The operator creates these using the pipe server software or imports them from a CAD system. The operator then schedules one or more of these parts for cutting. There is one scheduled part for every part you cut. This makes it easy to nest them on the pipes, to keep track of what you need to cut and what you have already cut, and measure your pipe needs against your pipe inventory. Pipes arrive in the yard and are easily imported into the pipe system as pipe inventory. The scheduled parts are then easily nested onto pipes selected from the pipe inventory. And then the nestings are sent to the machine for cutting. As the parts are cut out of the pipe, the Watts machine automatically updates the status of the pipe and parts. This allows users to track many things, including job completion and remaining pipe inventory. So let's first take a look at part design by designing something challenging like this pressure vessel. I'll open the part designer and the first thing I'll do is add an end cut. Two end cuts define a part. Here I'll move the right end cut out from zero. Note that I can input by an equation or by metric. In this section, I define the pipe. Here I'm setting the pipe outer diameter from a list of scheduled pipe ODs. The wall thickness selections are automatically constrained to the pipe OD, though I could manually enter any value for OD or wall thickness. Here I'll enter part, customer, and job information. This is very useful in managing your jobs and your customers. That's all shown in another demonstration. Now let's add some holes, starting with this one. I create a new hole cut, specify the start point on the pipe, bring the cut around 90 degrees, there you can see it. I'll change the hole diameter, and now I'll set some non-dimensional cut information like feed rate, cut surface, and bevel angle. Now I'll duplicate this cut and put it on the other side by rotating it around the pipe. There you can see both holes. Now I'll create the rest of the holes. I'll offset this hole from the pipe center line. Here's a more complex hole for a mate pipe connecting at an angle onto the pressure vessel. I'll finish up the holes, and here's the final design. Now I'll add marking to identify the pressure vessel. I move it just like a cut, change the font size, and there it is. Now let's take a look at scheduling some parts and nesting parts on pipes. We'll start with some fittings we've already designed. We'll filter down to just the parts for this demonstration and schedule some parts. Scheduled parts are the parts we actually nest on the pipe. Here I'm going to create 10 parts based on this design. They show up here. I'll create five parts for this design part. And I'll create one of these. Now I'm ready to nest these on a pipe. I've loaded the pipe on the machine and measured it to 21 and a half feet. Because we can easily nest parts at the machine, we can take advantage of the variable lengths common to pipes, such as single and double randoms. Here's the pipe I just created with the part I added to it. 
The data for this part is shown down below the pipe. The section up here shows all the parts needing to be cut that can fit on this pipe. And this section shows the parts selected in the available parts list. Now I'll click Auto Nest and the system will automatically add available parts for a best fit nesting on the pipe. Note that you could have also pre-nested these parts from this same application running remotely in the office. This section lets me edit information about the pipe. The pipe material goes here. And the supplier information goes here. Once the part is cut, this data gets added to the part so that each part will have information such as heat number, cut date, the machine that cut it, and how long it took to make the cut. I'm ready to send this nesting to the machine, which I would do by clicking here. Now let's see how the data from the pipe gets locked onto the part. Here I manually set this part to cut, and see how the material type and data get permanently locked onto the part. This valuable data is preserved in the database for whenever you may need it. Now we can load the pipe nesting to the machine and watch how the machine automatically updates the parts as they are cut. The user goes to the Pipes tab and filters down to 4.5 inch pipe to locate the pipe that he just loaded onto the machine. He selects this pipe for nesting. With the pipe ready for nesting, all uncut parts with the same outer diameter and wall thickness are shown. The operator filters out all parts that are not of the material type of the given pipe. Next, he adjusts the pipe length to the pipe's true measured length. This length differs from the standard random size on the pipe delivery list. He then selects the machine that will be cutting the pipe, and then selects two parts that are urgently needed. He automatically nests these two first, and then nests out the rest of the pipe. Then he loads the pipe to the machine. And once it is loaded, he's ready to begin cutting. The operator jogs the machine to the end of the pipe, and then begins cutting. Here we can see that when a part is completely cut, the part's status changes from on machine to cut. The second part is cut off and its status also changes to cut. Here's a closer look at the parts we just cut. And here are the actual parts. Meanwhile, the machine continues cutting the rest of the nested parts.